Hey, what's up? It's Václav here. I have recently upgraded my Home Assistant dashboard to the great sections layout. The video is linked here, and at the end of this video I will add few useful lessons I have learned. But the biggest learning I made was in finally getting the Picture Elements card under control. People use this card to uh, make sexy 3D floor plans. The way this card works is it overlays different controls over a background image. So it is the key to precisely position them to the right place over the background. I don't use floor plans as I prefer to have a rather simple interface. But I use the picture elements cards to create custom cards to show telemetry for our cars or for the 3D printer. I create tables with icons, labels and states. I change their color and hide and show only the relevant information. The challenge is that the elements are horizontally and vertically aligned to the center and their size is changing with the resolution or zoom or the font size. So to create a table that does not break, you need to master changing the alignment to the left, right, or you might want to align them horizontally to the baseline as well. I spent quite some time researching that and I'll share the results with you, but I also give you useful tools to fine tune your cart to your specific needs. So let's get started. Right, so this is, uh, these are the two cards that we would like to recreate and uh, we'd like to do something similar as this uh, table here on the, on the right. So once we get the principle, uh, we can, you can then design your own cart. Uh, as you want. So uh, to show you how it's done, we will start from something simpler. So I will go to the edit mode and I'm going to add a new section and here new card and I'm going to go for picture elements and in here in card option I have a picture, a very simple picture with uh, just a 10 by 10 grid and I have uh, stored it in my www folder which is referred to as a uh, local and uh, the picture is called test background png so this is how it looks it's 10 by 10 grid and um, this is the card and it actually uh, it created automatically an example state batch and i don't need that so i'm gonna just delete this one and i'm gonna add a new element in here i will go for state label and in here I'm gonna use something from the car. So it's gonna be city go. And I'm gonna use uh, last trip average electric consumption. So this is the value and the label I have here. And uh, as you can see on the bottom, there is the style and it says left 50%, top 50%. And the car is positioned exactly on the 50 horizontally and 50 vertically right in the middle. So it's aligning it. Uh, to the center and if I would create another label so let's add another element with a state label and I'm gonna go for last trip distance and they're currently one on top of the other so if I just put it on 60% so it's gonna be 10% below as you can see they are aligned to the center I like to align them to the left side or to the right side how do I do that well I could uh, try to change the numbers in here but first of all, it's going to be quite difficult to align them exactly. And the other issue is, as the values are going to uh, change and as the font size is going to change, this is not going to be aligned, right? So we have to find another way. And the way how we're going to do it is, uh, we're going to add a few other parameters into this style section. The style section is essentially a cascading style sheets properties. In fact, I will just start with one. I will uh, draw a border around uh, the two elements to visualize what we're dealing, dealing with. So I'll just say border, one pixel solid red, and I will copy the same thing to the previous one. In fact, I'm gonna just uh, switch to the code editor because it might be uh, easier. So uh, I'm gonna add the border right here. And uh, now we can clearly see that both state labels are vertically and horizontally centered on the coordinates I set. And our goal is to change this alignment from the center to left or right. So how do we do that? Well, I need to find the right CSS property. And this property is called transform. And the transform property let us to rotate, scale, skew or translate an element 
so in our case the state label so here is a demo on the uh, developer mozilla org website so here's how it works so uh, currently uh, there is an icon of this fox and uh, if i would uh, type transform translate 120 pixels and 50 percent it will just move it to the right and down uh, i can also scale it uh, i can skew it uh, and i can combine multiple uh, transformation into one line but we are really interested in the translation so currently i'm on zero coordinates uh, but the great thing about it is I can use the percentage which is using the size of the element. So if I'm centered and I would move it 50% to the right, it will align it to the left side. So uh, let's see how it uh, works on our uh, picture entity card. So I will add a, a new line in here and add uh, this new property transform and add translate. And uh, I'd like to start uh, with the baseline, just enter 0, 0 to see where we are. So it looks like the label is uh, already translated. Uh, so if I add 0, 0, it'll move to the right down. So if I'd like to move it back to where it was, uh, I would have to here on the uh, x-axis uh, move it back by 50%, so minus 50%. And now move it up again by 50%, so minus 50% in the Y direction. So this is the starting position. This is where we can start. Uh, so if you would like to uh, align it uh, to the left, uh, well, we already did that, right? So that was the zero uh, on the X uh, coordinates so if you would take this transformation and I will copy it uh, to the bottom one as well now we are aligned uh, to the left and uh, if I would like to align it to the right uh, this would be minus 100% in here and uh, minus 100% in there so now we are right aligned and uh, the other thing we can do is uh, we can do font size and uh, we can make a font smaller. So uh, let's say it'll be eight points and uh, we will do it here as well. And now we can actually bring them closer. So this one is not gonna be 60, but 55. And uh, we can finally get rid of those borders. So, so now we have a sort of a table that is aligned to the right. And uh, well, we can also bring the alignment uh, back to the left. So, Let's do it this way. So now we know how it works. So I can go to my uh, actual picture elements card and uh, basically show you uh, what I've done. But before I do that, there is one more thing, uh, one more advanced topic I'd like to share with you. You might use it or not. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, there is actually a way how you can combine uh, or make calculations, calculate those numbers, not to have a constant in here, but calculate them somehow. And uh, let me show why I uh, might want to do that. So uh, let's say I would like to put both of those uh, on the same line, right? So I would like to, for example, say this is going to be minus 100 and uh, it's going to be uh, on the same, same uh, line. So they are both uh, on a 50% and one is aligned to the right, one is aligned to the left. And what if I take the consumption and I would increase the font size to 16%, right? So I have two different font sizes and they're uh, vertically aligned to the center. What if I would like to move uh, the the right, the, the consumption uh, per 100 kilometers, would I like to move it up to align the baseline again i could play with the 50 percent so i can do it like a 49 percent or something and try to do it but there is a better way what i could actually do it i can do minus 50 percent minus and it's 16 points so i would take something like six points 
and uh, I would take uh, part of the font size from there. But as you can see, it doesn't work like this. Uh, it basically ignores the line, that's why it's moved back to the center, because it doesn't understand what I wrote. And, and the reason it uh, doesn't understand it, because I, I can't just do it this way. There is a CSS function calc, and if I would just put it inside this function calc within the brackets, uh, and then I have to make sure that there are spaces around this minus, and in here, I will move it up to the same baseline as well. So I'll say calc minus 50% minus, let's say, three points. We have both uh, both lines roughly on the same, same baseline. Now, why did I take three points and not four points, not, not half of the font size? Well, the baseline is not really in the middle of the bottom half of the font, right? So it's slightly less, so I took three points, take some adjustments, it's not exact science, but I can tune it visually, but still better than fiddling uh, with the percent here. So this is a bit advanced topic, you, you can use it or you don't have to, but now you know and uh, you can pretty much do everything you want. So let me just walk you through uh, my card, so let me take my let's say city go in here and uh, well, there is one thing which uh, which is optional which you might ignore i'm using again custom card templater uh, and and the reason i'm using it uh, i have those uh, closed uh, door positions and i'm actually changing their color based on the state and for that i'm using this uh, custom template so with this customization, I can in the style say color template, and then I can write basically Jinja template. I changing the color based on a state of this binary center uh, that I have here in the section. But this is not what this video is about. So you can ignore this part. So we can start from here, picture elements. And uh, so the way how it works is I have those, uh, those lines, they're essentially all the same. Each line has three parts. Uh, there is the icon, then there is the, uh, some text. And for this one, I'm actually using, again, a custom text element, uh, element because unfortunately the picture element do not have any element for, for text label. So uh, this is optional. I could have entered the text inside the picture and then just uh, show the values. But I like it this way. And, and one of the reasons I like it this way because then I can dynamically show or hide uh, the text. Uh, and I do that, for example, in here, there is a conditional card. So this is the standard conditional card as part of uh, picture elements. And I'm actually showing or hiding text, including the label, uh, when the car is charging. So uh, I'm showing, for example, the charging time left, and I only show that when the car is charging, otherwise I hide it, the text would come in here. But anyway, uh, back to the three elements. So there is the icon, there is the label, and then there is the actual state. And the way how I designed that, as you can see, th those ones are all on the same level. So they are 5% from the top and the next one under it's 10% on the top. And uh, if I design this card, I could actually do it very easily visually in here. If I would just enter 15 in here, you could see that the text is jumping. Uh, under the text so I can adjust it. I could say this is, uh, I don't know, eight, five. Okay, I like five. So this is how I arrived to the five value. So I have decided I will be spacing those by 5% and all of them are now then very nicely spaced by 5% and this is how this table is done. So all of those are in the same horizontal position. And then horizontally, uh, you could see the icon is always on the 1% uh, in here, so 1% there. And the next icon is also on 1%. Then the label is uh, on the 8%, again, 8%. So this is like a table, they are horizontally aligned. So this is what we, uh, what I showed you in the 
previous grid example and the same thing uh, with the value so the value would be in 35% and 35% uh, in here and if I would like to move it a little bit to the right I could uh, I could play with that right so this is how I design the car and the same thing here on the right side once I figure uh, one of the lines I can then add uh, the other ones right under it so this is the card and uh, one of the things I like about uh, this picture elements card is it's not just a picture but uh, I can actually uh, click on it it'll show me more info about each individual entity so now you know when you can start creating beautiful cards all right that was fun now before I finish I've also promised to share a few lessons I learned while switching my dashboard to this sections layout I have moved all the views and it worked great in my previous video I faced the challenge on my main screen uh, in my previous version I had uh, buttons in three columns in a grid card but in the section layout I had to configure four columns so the buttons are smaller it worked great but in some rooms where I show both the temperature and the humidity the the second line is longer and it sometimes does not fit on the screen on a mobile phone or when zoomed in so in the video I didn't fully commit to the section layout for this view but the solution was quite simple the template card has an option to show multi-line secondary info I turned it on and it was great then I was briefly showing my energy management dashboard same as the weather forecast view this one used two columns layout with one narrow and one wide column and the same as the weather forecast view the setup was straightforward and works beautifully here it is I actually used uh, one feature that I learned uh, during the release party uh, how to span section across two rows the option to span a card across multiple columns is available from the visual editor and I did use that in my video but you can also span it across multiple rows but unlike the columns here you have to open the configuration in the YAML and add this line manually said that I could achieve the same by just adding the card inside this section under the first one so this is not really a big deal anyway now you know how it's done so happy dashboarding and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye